In this session, we're going to look at how to perform a test check. We're going to be using a while do loop, which is known as a pretest loop, and we're going to be performing the desk check on the following pseudocode. In a desk check, what we're really focused on is the variables. We want to be able to trace the variables as the program is run by the CPU and know what the variable is up to at any given state of the processing clock cycle. To begin with, it is suggested that you read through the program and understand what the program is trying to do. In the pseudocode presented, you'll notice there are some different words that we may be using, like let counter equal zero. In some pseudocode, they'll just go counter equal zero. Some people use I for their naming conventions and such ha and thus have I counter equal zero. The pseudocode should be very English-like, so we don't want to move into too technical scope or syntactical scope. So stay with a more English-like discussion. So let number equals input box, enter a number, means take an input box where they can enter in a number and store that in number. Do while number is greater than zero. So this is our do while loop, which is a pretest loop. So if the number is greater than zero, then count will be set to counter plus one. Counter begins at zero. So it will become one and answers will then be plus five. If the answer starts at 100, it'll add five to that. Let number minus input box enter another number. And then the loop closes and then it prints out the amount entered and counter. And it'll also output um, print answer and the variable answer. To perform a desk check, you can either use a piece of paper, otherwise I suggest that you set up a spreadsheet. I find it easier to use a spreadsheet because you're able to track the variables. What I like to do is place the variables across the top of the columns, and then as the variables change, I move down the rows because we don't know if the variable is going to change once or change a hundred times. So using this method makes it a little bit easier. So first of all, what you need to do is go through and get the different variables that you have. So in our case, we have counter, we have answer, and we have number. So let's place those in our spreadsheet. So we have counter, we have answer, and we have number. Now, in some cases, because number is going to come before answer, we can actually put them in any order we wish. And we just need to update them as we go. So, and one of the last things you need as part of a desk check is the output. So you must have the output as the last column. Now, these are our variables and this is our output. So sometimes you'll actually see these done as a title and boxed up but I'll just highlight these at the moment. And as the variables change, we'll work down the rows. So let's get underway. So the first thing we want to do is follow the program in a sequence. So the first thing the program does is let counter equal zero. So we would go back into counter and make counter zero. The next thing the program does is make answer equal 100. So our answer is equal to 100. Let number equals input box, enter a number. Now the data that is supplied is at the top. As we go through, the numbers will come in a sequential order. So we always start on the left and take each number. Every time the computer asks for an input, it's the next number, then the next number. We don't jump numbers. So in this case, enter a number. The first number is 2 and store that in number. So where number is... That would become two. Now the program moves to the next line. Do while number is greater than zero. Two is greater than zero. We can check that. Two is greater than zero. So counter equals counter plus one. So where counter is zero, if we add one to that, it becomes one. Answer equals answer plus five. Answer is currently 100. If we add five to that, it becomes 105. Next. It says, let number equal input box, enter a number. We've already used two, so the next number in our system is six. So number now becomes six. So as you can see with the desk check, we can move down the rows and we can see the variable changing. 
And at this point in the state of the program, number holds six, counter holds one, and answer holds 105. Now, because of the loop, we then head back up to the condition while number is greater than zero. And so at the moment, number is six, that is greater than zero. Therefore, we come back into here, counter equals counter plus one. One plus one is two. Answer equals answer plus five. Answer's currently 105, so it become 110. Let number equal input box enter another number. The next number will be eight. So number becomes eight. And then we perform the program again. So with the number being 8, counter is added to 1, answer is added to 5. So number is added to 1, so it becomes 3, and answer becomes 115. We then take in the next number, and because we've had 8, the next number is 9. The program, because 9 is greater than 0, will add 1 to this column, and we'll add 5 to this column. And you can see the program is sort of repeating itself. And that's the idea of the loop. So we now ask for another number. It's going to be 4. Because that's greater than 0, this will be added 1, and this will add 5. Then the program will ask for another number, which will be 13. Count will be added to 1. And answer will be added 5. Now, on the next time through, here uh, we've added 5 to make the 30 or 130 the input box enter another number is 0 now while number is greater than 0 well because it's now equal to it's not greater than that becomes false now you've got to remember the let number equal the input box 0 so number becomes 0 so when we go back up because number 0 is not greater than 0 then leaves that and heads to our output section or our print section because it has a mount entered in quotes, we have to put that in our output. So you have to enter in mount. Because it's lowercase, you must do that. So amount entered. And then the command goes amount entered, and then it has counter and the output of the variable. At the moment, counter is six. So it'll be amount entered six. Then we have another line which has answer and then the answer which is the text output and then the answer the variable answer contains 130 currently once we've done that the program ends which means we've actually finished our loop so what we have as a desk check is something that looks like this it shows the state of the variable changing as the program is run and we know every loop as we go through what the variables incremented to it's a good idea to use a ruler and follow it through line by line and make sure you update all the variables some people will make us assumptions and start jumping over and i don't suggest doing that so once you get an idea of how it works you don't start going one two three four five six because sometimes you'll go seven eight and you will lose marks for those and the very last important one such as zero being entered that's a key figure because that number must turn to zero for this condition to become false so we can leave and begin the output. So the answer that's been supplied looks like this. So amount entered six, answer 130. And that's what we've created in our spreadsheet. So I hope this has made it a little bit easier on how to do a desk check.